Hi there, I'm Loida Velasquez, Realtor.com, first time home buying expert and agent with Team BC at eXp Realty. Is working with an agent really necessary? In today's video, I will be sharing with you how to find an agent, ways that an agent can help you, smart questions to ask them, and what not to do when working with an agent. So let's get started. While buying a home can seem scary and intimidating, it doesn't have to be. Did you know that working with a buyer's agent actually doesn't cost you anything? In fact, generally speaking, the seller is the one that ends up paying for the buyer's agent fees. And because of that, it is extremely important that you go ahead and decide to work with a professional. It is our fiduciary duty to make sure that we negotiate the best price and terms for you so that you feel comfortable and confident every step of the way. So how is it that you can go ahead and find a real estate agent? There are quite a few different ways for you to be able to locate one that's either local to you or wherever it is that you're looking. First, start with your friends and family. See if they have any real estate agent referrals, maybe agents they have worked with in the past that they can highly recommend. Second, there's also realtor.com forward slash real estate agents. I don't know about you, but I'm always on my phone. So having that app makes things so much more easy and accessible just because you can literally go into your phone and search up and see if there are any agents in your area. And lastly, there's always social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, go ahead and take a look and see if there are any agents that are local to you that are active on different social media platforms. This is how you will be able to see if there are any agents that focus on listings, if there are any agents that are actually being proactive with whether it's prospecting or door knocking or whatever it is. Once you go ahead and find an agent or maybe a few, then at that point you can go ahead and interview each and every single one of them until you find that agent that you feel fully comfortable working with because at the end of the day, they will be assisting you and what will be probably the biggest purchase or investment that you're gonna be doing in a very long time. So now that I have shared with you how to find an agent, let me share with you what it is that we can do to help you. You'd be surprised how many first time buyers tell me that they think that they need to be the ones looking up all the homes and all of the information, when in reality, that is our job. So what are some of the things that we can help you with? First of all, when we are searching for properties for you, we want to make sure that we're actually sending you any homes that might fit your needs based on what you tell us. So it is extremely important that you share with us all of your wants and your needs. Anything that would be a deal breaker, please tell us. It's not that you're being too picky, but we want to make sure that we're not wasting each other's time or we're not sending you any homes that you're not even going to consider. I hear it all the time when I'm talking to first time buyers that have worked with other agents. They tell me, you know what? I had to switch agents because the one I was originally working with kept on sending me homes that I didn't like. And they were in the areas that I told them I didn't even want to consider. So make sure that your agent is listening to you and your needs, because this might affect you in your transaction or the way that you feel just as you're moving forward, searching for homes. So along with that, other things that we can do for you is whenever there is a home that possibly has an addition or something that was added on or expanded or changed, we can look and see if these parts of the home were actually permitted or not permitted. When something is permitted, there's no problem. We're good to go. But if there is something in the home that was done that did not have permits, this could possibly affect your loan and getting approved and not just that, but even affect the value of the home. So again, we're here to be a resource for you. We have so many different connections, whether we need to talk to the city or the county or an inspector or, or whoever it is, we will just want to make sure that you're making the best choice of whatever home it is that you want to proceed in submitting an offering and even at the end of the day, purchasing. With the goal of allowing us to best serve you, it is very important that you always share with us any questions that you have. We get it, you've never purchased a home before, so you're probably anxious and confused as to what type of questions you need to be asking. So some of the questions that you can ask your real estate agent are what they know about the neighborhood. 
There's a lot of other things. If you have kids, find out what the school districts look like and where the schools are located. These are just some basic, basic questions that you can ask. You can also find out if you are perhaps considering a home that has an association, what does the HOA cover? There are so many different associations and the fees that they charge sometimes cover utilities, sometimes they cover trash and water, but sometimes they don't cover anything. So you can ask your agent to see if they can find out regarding the HOA fees. Along with that, specifically for properties that you're looking at, see if your agent can get information from the listing agent in regards to the condition of the home and what the owner has recently done. Have there been any upgrades? Do they know if the roof has been changed recently? How about the electrical and the plumbing? These are all big ticket items that if they are not in the best condition can actually cost you thousands of dollars. If you would like a list of more questions that you can ask your real estate agent once you're out home shopping, make sure to visit realtor.com and go under the section tips for buyers. So now that I have told you all of the amazing ways that a real estate agent can help you, I now want to quickly touch on some things that you definitely want to avoid, also known as agent etiquette. First of all, once you're shopping around looking for an agent, you'll want to make sure that you commit to working with one agent. Once you start working with that one agent, they will have you sign what is called a buyer's representation agreement. And this pretty much just means that you are hiring that agent to represent you in the purchase of the home. And pretty much it's like a commitment. They are committed to working with you. You are committed to working with them. But if for some reason something happens and things don't work out, or you want to fire that agent, you can go ahead and cancel and move on to find someone else. So you're not really tied to them, but at least they are committed to you once you get that document signed. The last thing that you want to be doing is talking to multiple agents, having them think that they're all working for you exclusively, when in reality, everyone's just kind of running around with a chicken with their head cut off. And that's just really not fair for us. We get paid until a deal closes. So we work only based off of commission. So if we're putting in all of this work to later find out that you're actually talking to other agents, this is just something that we don't even want to deal with. So make sure that you only select one real estate agent. Another thing that might happen is that as you're searching for homes, there might be three homes that you end up falling in love with and want to submit offers. So one thing to keep in mind is that you only want to submit one offer at a time. Imagine if you were to send three offers and they all get accepted, what would happen to the other two that got rejected? I'll tell you that the sellers will probably be very upset because you've wasted not only their time, but their agent's time. And so many people are involved with that entire process that you definitely want to stay away from that. And lastly, to remind you as your agent, we are here to help you every step of the way from start to finish. So if at any point you have any questions regarding the transaction, please come to us first. Do not contact the listing agent and even worse, do not contact the seller. I've seen it happen in the past where buyers go and talk to the seller thinking that they're going to get a better shot at getting their offer accepted. But what ends up happening is that the seller sees that as leverage for them and uses that and negotiates against the buyer. So if you're a first time buyer, let us be your go-to resource for all of your first time home buying needs. Be on the lookout for a lot more videos regarding your home search, closing the deal, submitting an offer, and so much more. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up, share it with someone else, and also subscribe to this channel. Also, remember to go to realtor.com, buy your resource center for a lot more tips and articles that you can get informed about. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.